a large model showman's engine, part 53, removing the live steam injector check valve to see why it is not working. Over the years in this miniature steam hobby, I have worked with quite a lot of live steam injectors, and most of them have been fine. But I have had some problems with the injector on this 4.5-inch scale showman's engine. I've known about this problem for a while, so here we go, I'm going to fix it. What is the problem? Well, the live steam injector will not inject water into the boiler. I open the water valve first to cool the injector, and when I open the steam valve and adjust the water valve, all I get is a lot of water from the overflow, and none of this is going into the boiler. The first thing I'm going to do is have a look at the condition of the ball. I'm pretty sure this isn't the problem, but it's worth checking anyway. Very carefully, I remove the top cap. While I'm doing this, I'll illustrate some of the problems I've personally had with injectors over the years and the causes. Problem number one. Air getting into the water line to the injector. Solutions. Check the piping, tighten the union nuts, and if that doesn't work, change the injector water valve. Problem number two. The injector is blocked with lime scale. Solution. Remove the injector, pull out the cones and immerse the entire assembly in some acid. I use Kilrock K Kettle Descaler and I find it really good for this sort of thing. If the internal parts of the injector are physically damaged, buy a new injector. Problem number three, examine the check valve. There could be a blockage in this area. I'm going to remove the check valve and have a closer look at it. The first thing to do though is to remove the ball and have a look at that. The phosphor bronze ball is not too bad, but the seat on which it sits inside the check valve is not particularly good. So I can remove the check valve, I need to remove the motion guard from this side. The motion guard is held in place by one 2BA bolt at the back and it fits onto one of the cylinder studs at the front, so it's very easy to remove it. And now it's spanner time. The cylinder, the motion work and the check valves are fitted to the boiler using phosphor bronze studs. All I have to do to remove the check valve is undo two nuts, one at each side. The problem is you can only go so far before the nut hits the side of the check valve, then you have to move to the other side and slacken that off. This is really not too difficult, and on this traction engine, all of the parts are quite large. Even though the engine isn't in steam, it's quite warm, because outside today it's very warm indeed. I'll be glad to get back in the workshop, it's cool in there. With the nuts removed, I could see there were washers underneath, and they fell onto the gravel path underneath the engine, and that's where they can stay. When the time comes, I'll just fit some new ones. This is what I think the problem is, and it's what I've thought all along. Look at the gasket. It really did feel like there was a partial blockage, and the partial blockage is the gasket. Here I'm using an old Allen key to enlarge the hole into the boiler. Frankly, this gasket is badly made, and it's a bit of a mess. I'm going to further trim this gasket around the hole using a sharp knife, before I refit the check valve. This sequence shows just how much of the hole into the boiler was covered by the gasket. When I clean out this hole into the boiler and trim the gasket, I'm hoping that the injector works perfectly and I'm fairly confident. After putting all of the parts in this plastic food container, I took them up into the workshop. That's not a barco spanner, very true, it's a ten tool spanner and it's very good. Having a close look at the flange of the check valve, you can see how far the gasket was away from the hole. Before refitting this check valve, I am going to renovate it, of course. And the job starts by removing every trace of sealant that's been put on this thing over the years. Sealant can cause major problems if it gets into the wrong place. I normally use Loctite 542 as a sealant, but I never put this much on. Oh, the delights of steam engines. Look at this, a combination of soot, coal dust and steam oil. I am going to clean up the body of this casting, but before that I'm going to undo this nut that holds the valve in place, 
that allows the check valve to be isolated from the boiler. Not all miniature check valves have this facility, but it's very useful in case you get a problem with the ball in the check valve. You just rotate the square part 90 degrees and this isolates the check valve from the boiler. The valve is packed with graphited yarn, but this graphited yarn is a bit past its sell-by date and it's quite hard, so I'm going to replace it with some new stuff. The valve itself is not threaded into the body of the check valve, it's just sat in there, but it can't come out, because if you look carefully, at the end the threaded part has been closed up a little bit. This is some brand new, old stock graphited yarn. The old stuff, not the horrible stuff that we get these days. I'm pushing it into place with a screwdriver. Notice I'm rotating the graphited yarn in a clockwise direction. That way when I refit the gland nut, it will pull the last piece of yarn in the right direction. That's one part of the job done. Now I'm removing what's left of the graphited yarn from inside the gland nut. And this stuff's really old and very hard. In this next clip I'd like to apologise for my terrible camera work. I'm actually fitting a steam grade silicone o-ring before finally refitting the gland nut. This compresses a graphited yarn and forms a near perfect seal. I've taken all of the parts out of the food container and now I have the check valve in there. And I'm going to pour some of this on it. This is standard cellulose thinners or lacquer thinner as you call it in the USA. A couple of health and safety points. First of all, do this in a very well ventilated space and wear eye protection and other suitable PPE where necessary. I left the check valve in the cellulose thinners for about an hour but it didn't remove the paint. It's really well baked in place. If it's stuck that well, why remove it? I am however going to remove the really bad bits and for this I'm using my Proxon angle grinder fitted with a flapper wheel. What I'm going to do next is paint the check valve. I put it back into the cellulose thinners to clean off all the debris and I've sprayed a quantity of etch primer into the cap of an aerosol can. And now using a very small paintbrush I'm painting the check valve with etch primer. It's a very warm day today and the etch primer was actually drying as I was brushing it on. But because this is a very good quality etch primer it dried very well. I will leave you with this shot of the paint actually drying in real time. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.